Hi and welcome back to Socket Hunter's YouTube channel. This is a show off. I don't usually brag and when I do it's because I know what I am bragging about and I'm fairly confident that I can pull it off. I need three tubes of paint out of here. These three. Strictly speaking, I guess I don't really need any other tubes or pans of paint than these three. I'm going to adjust my camera. So, I think it's straight now. So, this is my Mary Blue. It's a primary yellow, primary cyan, primary magenta. And I got a grey goose that I want to paint. So um, I'm going to show how that can be achieved with three primary colors. Then my Mary Blue and the Holbein gouache are this far the only two paints that I have found where there is adequate primary colors in. Otherwise you normally need six colors because you um, you normally don't get that good uh, primaries. They're not as pure as one would hope for. I'm gonna wring my brush. That is actually dirty so I need to clean my brush first. Let's see if I can make a wash here. Still dirty. Go on. Let go of all whatever pigment is in you. as much as I can. Good, we got probably, probably some more. Okay, this should be enough to make a base color. This goose is a Danish goose, or, well, it lives different places. I took a, a f the reference photo of it on the field where we have our horses this spring. Him and his lady was taking a rest and eating some grass and I took some photos of him and he's grey on the body with the, these blackish stripes down his neck and a uh, orangey beak and a black eye I'll try and get some greyish background because it was spring I want it to be a cool grey so I start with blue make a fairly blue wash this is going to be interesting because this is wet paint. But I want to keep everything on this palette with. You've seen that I actually took the paint out, the tubes. And what I'm doing. Wet paint is very strong and that's fine. The annoying part is that it sticks to your brush. So you stick it in and it sticks in the bristles. And because I need a grey, I need all three colours in somewhat even proportions. I'll probably have to use a little more of the yellow than of any of the others. Because the staining power of the yellow is maybe not quite as high. The bottom part of the paper here underneath my hand I'm going to use for testing the colours. I cut it to size uh, to fit better on my camera. Now I've got two yellow. It's a little too green, isn't it? It's much too blue and much too. Let's maybe add a good deal more of this magenta. No, I think it went too red. Yep. 
soften a little bit of a trial and error, especially getting the, the neutrals. Now I got the right color, now I just need some more water. So we add some, some more of that. I'm gonna rinse my brush and then I'm gonna make a big loop of water on there. It doesn't matter that my brush isn't entirely clean. It's gonna have that color anyways. glued the paper a little bit to the, my, my workspace with a bit of painter's tape here so things doesn't move around too much. This is going to be a video with a lot of breaks because now I have to dry that before I go on otherwise things start to bleed like crazy. Be right back. When I do use the hairdryer, I move the palette out of the way a bit because I um, I don't want the paint in here to dry too much as well because if um, if the paint dries up too quickly. Um, it um, it the, the 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 pigment concentration rate goes up as well. Uh, it can be get too dark. I'm now trying to to get some of the shadows in here. Too slow getting that one up there fixed. I can add some more pigment and hope that it softens it up. It did. The paper I'm using is St. Cuthbert's Mill, the one that is called. Yeah, which one is it? Come on. So I could first smell. Come on. Where did I put the pad? Here. Sandus Waterford. Sandus Waterford. And it's the cold press knot. So it was too much junk lying around here and yes I know I have a run up there I'm not gonna address it right now I'm just gonna leave it and just paint over it with the background later on and down here I'm gonna cut it off eventually it's got a nice shadow here on the back side neck. So let's let that sit. Let's try and make an orange for his beak. I'm gonna do that over here. I'm gonna take some of the magenta that I haven't messed up with other things. Okay, good. See how stringy it is. I 
need to have a look at my reference folder here for an idea of how that color is. Actually, it needs to be a little more red. I'm going to place it up there so I can pull it down if I need more. This is better. There. I don't need so much of this, but I need a few things to shade it, so I'm just gonna make a small wash over here. Make it thinner. But that's a very decent orange from a magenta. So. I want it fairly thin for starters. Yeah, something like that. to get the windows on my computer here so that I can see things. I need this corner stuck down. My paper is flapping. I can't have that. benefit of making a, a wash is that you get kind of the same color when you dip your brush in it. And that's my friends and my siblings going nuts on Facebook. I'm very sorry. It's very difficult to turn off. I'm not even locked into Facebook on my computer as far as I can tell. I have it. I don't have it open. That's more like it. So every time somebody texts me, I get a pling. Now this would be an obvious use for some um, masking fluid. Be right back. Now, I got three kinds of masking fluid, and I'm not sure if any of them work. The problem about masking fluids is that once you open them, you actually have to use them fairly quickly. Because they really don't last long. This is weird and goopy. It's a Vallejo. There's some fluid in there. I think I'm going to try and put a little bit there. Let it dry and see if that works. And I'm using a color shaver to apply it with because there's few things that ruin brushes as badly as um, masking fluid. And I have no idea why I bought a colorless Winston Newton one. I shook this up, but I shouldn't have done it. But it had separated, so. Normally you shouldn't shake um, masking fluids, but as mine had separated, I did it anyways, because 
either it works or it doesn't work and it, uh, we've got the Pipio one here and that looks like it's separated as well good so you apply masking fluid on places where you don't want any paint at all I can't recommend doing it on larger areas typically you would use it where you want to highlight like in a white dot in an eye or some some fine lines or something you have to test the the, the fluids uh, masking fluids on the type of paper you're using because they don't always work on all kinds of papers you add it and you let it dry and then you paint over it and let the paint dry and then you remove the masking fluid you shouldn't leave the masking fluid on there for very long only as long as you need it sometimes if you leave it like maybe overnight or something like that it can really stain you the paper or it can stick so hard to the the, the paper that you can't get it off again so these two looks like they're drying okay that one was maybe a bit thick so it's it's kind of a little bit of a trick with, with masking fluid you after you paint you really should peel it off and you shouldn't paint too soon either because um, then if it's not dry first of all you can pull it uh, away but it can also mean that it, uh, when it's not dried enough that the paint can get it under it uh, some types of paper will allow pigment to to seep in under the masking fluid as well so that's why it's a good idea to test it we can maybe test the first little part here I think we can test. Oh, the paper wasn't quite dry yet. It just looked like it. Oh well. So I'll pause the camera while all this dries. Okay, so I think all of it is is dry now. Paint is after all. Okay, that one worked. That was the Pipe one that was the last. Here's the Winston Newton. That worked well as well. Now, the Vallejo, I'm not sure about because I'm not even sure it was a proper dry. That came off, but it stained the paper. I'll see if I can zoom in and show you. Need to move the camera down, 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 down. Come on. Do I really have to? So, zoom in. Oops. I always get that. So, well, and I'm oh, sorry, the camera is too close. You can see that is ever so tiny bit turquoise. And I got dirt under my fingers, but that is mostly pigments from. Uh, playing with oil pastels. So I won't use the Vallejo, that goes away. I'll use this, the Winston Newton. And I'll move my camera back again. So I'm quite happy that this works because I haven't had it all that long. I had an old bottle that was like crusty dry. But this one, oops, dipped it in way too deep. It's quite thick down there. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do if you're not supposed to. So 
shake them because they separate real bad. Now, <laughs> masking fluid has a quite particular smell to it. There's some, um, oh, what is it called? Um, I can't remember the, the name of it. The compound. It's the smell of old urine. Well, I'm sorry for being so blunt, but that's the only thing I can remember. Uh, so, now we're good. I can now try and paint that eye. Now I'll leave that to dry a bit more, to be honest. So maybe I should work on the beak. I'm messing around here, not knowing where to go when and why. I'm gonna start working on the, the beak here. Some heavy shading in there. And that's kind of a funny curved shade like that there and here we got the nostril to get things in <gasps> the camera's just totally crooked sorry and this paper is uh, very absorbent so it you can really it's good for working on layers and layers and, and wet on dry because the pigment kind of stays where you put it. And um, that is good for detailed work. It's not super fantastic if you want to to do um, wet and wet techniques on this paper. Then you need to wet it quite a lot before you get the, the flow of things. Guess I could start working on those, on that neck. I need more, more detail here on the, I'm not going too far over towards the beak because I don't really want it to bleed it together. The problem about absorbent paper is that you can also, if you're not careful, you can have some harsh drying lines when when applying your uh, your next layer. So if you want to soften things up, you have to be a little quick going in with a wet brush and ease out the the lines make a soft transition. I've got all these markings on his neck. I lost some of them but I got my reference photo a photocopy of it sitting in front of me. And I'll just kind of copy the general idea of them. I'm quite sure they're individual anyways. And I don't think anybody's coming to beat me up for having squiggle the line the wrong way on a gooseneck.
For this I'm using a, a detailer brush that is really meant for acrylic paint. But I find it very handy to do detailed watercolor work with because it's not carrying a lot of water and it gives it off in a in a adequate speed for me. What brush to to use for what is is a very individual thing. So my best advice on that thing is go try some out. If you know somebody who also paints, maybe allow them to try your brushes and you can try theirs. Maybe take a course or... I haven't seen any shops where you're allowed to, to try the brushes out. Most of the brushes I use are not super expensive. I don't buy the, like, the, the cheapest bundle where you get like... 15 for two dollars. It's not that I don't think you can find a decent brush in there, but that's probably it You might get 15 brushes, but there might or might not be just one of them you can You can actually use So I buy I buy them in the, the art store normally sometimes I buy Decent looking hobby brushes in the hobby store as well and, um, and just simply try them out. I also buy them in the in the art store, of course. Um, and by now, I I know kind of what I like, what type of brushes I like. I like mixed hairs, like the icon brush I got here from Jackson. That's mixed hair, that's synthetic hair, and natural hair in a mix, and you get the best of both worlds. Um, and I like synthetic hair. I, I overall I don't like very much how um, how uh, natural hair on their own act. I think they dump the water too fast. But it's again, it's an individual thing what people appreciate and what others do. It's quite funny. I, w I forgot who it was. I was watching somebody else on YouTube painting and she cursed um, synthetic brushes to, to a, a dark and fiery place. Uh, uh, she didn't, but, but she really do not appreciate synthetic brushes and I sat there laughing because that, that's just I'm fine with that I mean she can <laughs> she can dislike them all she wants uh, but but it's and it just goes to show how, how different people are now I need a black um, this is not dark enough and it will take forever to to become black because it needs to dry up so I'm going to mix a little concentrated amount of black because I also need kind of something darker in there now it looks black on my palette but does it look black on my paper I'd say black enough. Now, I really don't want too much. I, uh, I probably want the smallest brush I got. That was the wrong one. It's next to it. I think 
that group of masking fluid is too much but hey we'll see when I remove it Sharp enough. Oh, that was a contrast star, sorry. There. What I can do is I can zoom in a bit. There. I have to take uh, the autofocus off because see what happens when I turn it on. Every time I move it, it flickers. So, and it looks kind of weird because I got that uh, masking fluid in there. Now I need the paint to dry, and I think it is actually already dry. Yeah, that was too much masking fluid. I got a little bit of something there. There. I got this fine, fine detail of brush, so I'm just going to continue painting around here in here. Because I don't want that, that big a, a highlight. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of the red on the magenta in here to make a little bit of an orange. To make it just a tiny bit brown. It's not something you would actually really notice until the... the you won't notice it ever, period. But um, once the... it, I just kind of make a difference if it's hard black or not. And this goose actually has an orange ring around his eye. Very, very fine orange marking. Like that. It's got a little bit of a grey shadow here. Goes a little bit over his eye too, so his... That brush is just too too small for to carry any water for anything. I think the eye looks a little small. I might extend it a bit. I'm gonna take now you can't see the palette, but I'm gonna take some grey. The grey I mixed for his face and neck. Put it into a well there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the the orange from his beak because I'm gonna shade his beak 
Uh, so I want kind of a dark version of the orange, but I want the shading to be the color of his body. I have to make a quick break here. Okay. His beak. So this far I've actually only mixed three colors, a black, an orange, and a gray, and this is pretty much what I'm going to use. For the whole painting, no, not the background, I'll use these p colors when I get to the background, but um, I'm not going to mix a whole lot more colors. I'm kind of fixing his eye a little bit because it got too small, looks too much like a pig eye or something. And just a little bit more makes him look a little friendlier. Not that he was particularly friendly, he thought it was so massively annoying that I was following him and his girlfriend around on the field pointing at them with the camera. But they didn't take off, they just walked a little further away. And at some point he stood up and tried to look tall. And, uh, and dangerous, so I backed down a little bit. Made a mistake when I'm like drawing here. Oops, wrong one. Need the wash. Keeping mixing the, the shade color and my orange a bit together to get different versions of that mix. To intensify some the patches. Bad idea, bad idea, no, please. My patience uh, doesn't match my my choice of paint. I can feel that I've done the acrylics a little too much lately because they dry really quickly so I can quickly go in and, and continue when I've done something. How quickly watercolor dries much depends on your paper. How and how 
absorbent it is. And it depends on how much glycerin is in your paints as well. If there's a lot of glycerin, it might dry a little slower. So if you think your paints are drying too quickly, you can actually add a little bit of glycerin to your, your paint mix. I haven't tried this because I usually don't need more work time. And glycerin also make the, the paints um, a little more shiny when you finish. There I used... Um, I had wetted the area, so I used the the wet area to just add a little more pigment here at the end and let the dispersion spread the the pigment. It can be a way to to do gradients. And I think everything but the eye is now so wet that I can't work on it. But I had that little sh triangular shadow around the eye that I needed to do. But I don't want it. This is a little too strong, so I'm taking some paint over there and I'm going to add a little bit of extra water. So I have a lighter version. I don't want it to look like he's wearing makeup. There's something dirty there. Gotta get it over there. And I need these uh, necklines to be darker. So now I added a little bit of the black to my thin mix there. To make them stand out a bit more.
I'm gradually adding more and more because it, it, they go darker as it, we get down the neck. little pieces like this this is about the size of my hand or the palm of my hand is a good way to practice with watercolor it doesn't take super long time necessarily you don't waste a lot of paper and um, and it's it's doable. It is not, uh, you, you, you don't have to go, oh my god, that is such a big piece of work. Small, small things are good as well. And you have to do everything the same as you would on a larger painting. Plus, you are using small brushes and they are cheaper than big brushes as well so it's a it's a win-win situation for for starting out just keep adding until you you get it to the darkness oh you can't even see what I'm doing down there Just keep on adding until you get to the value you want of, of these things. And if you're in doubt, try and step, uh, take a step back and uh, look at it from a distance because sometimes it can be hard to judge what you're doing when you sit by your nose in the painting. But if you stand up and, and look at it from a little bit of a distance, you can see things you, you don't really notice up close. And things that look terrible up close might look a lot better on the distance. I got the benefit of the camera because that really shows things in a different way. <coughs> I need a sip of tea, two seconds. I want to soften the bit here. The synthetic uh, brush, detail brush I do here, I use here, there's a couple of benefits to it. As I said, it doesn't give off a whole lot of water, so it gives you a lot of control. But it's also because it's meant for acrylics. It's a little more stiff than the average um, watercolor brush. So you can actually scrub a little bit if you want to correct something. If you want have a little bit of a too harsh a line, you can scrub a little bit more with it than you can with most um, most watercolor brushes.
I think I gave him a little too many of these lines. His neck. I'm not sure I drew in that many be at the beginning. I can tell. Well, it's better to start narrow and then go wider than the other way because it's easier to add paint than to move it, remove something that was too much. I'm not gonna do a whole lot more with that. It looks okay as it is. I'm gonna do a little more with his beak though. So let's turn the palette over so we get the oranges back again. Got that shady color here because I lost it in here. this a bit because I accidentally drew the line wrong when I traced it over to the paper. For sketches for watercolor Things. I sometimes do the sketch directly on the paper, other times I do it on something else. I was not very confident with this, so that was, I think this comes from a different piece of paper. Different shade for, for this. Go take a little bit of the black here because we need something really dark in here. I shouldn't add it right now because everything is really wet. The cloth that I was cleaning my brush on is too dirty, so now I grabbed a clean one. Oh my, oh my. Maybe I should start thinking about the background. He was on a grayish kind of wilted grass. So I actually think I will take some of this shadow color I've used on his beak because that is already orangey. Then I'll take, I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. This is well I'm working on. So I'll take, I, got, I made some dirty stuff to my yellow here. I'll try and pick that up. So let's see how this looks. That's too bright yellow. Pick up some more of that dirty yellow there. 
because I need a good deal of, of paint for, for the background. So let's clean up all the gunk I left here. So that was too yellow. I got loads of that grayish brown for the wash for his head and neck. So I'm going to add that. That made it kind of greenish because it was a cold grey I mixed. Let me have a look at my reference photo. There is some green in there. And they kind of goes like that. So I'll use this for starters. And this is gonna be more washed out because that's further in the background. So I'm wetting the paper before I start adding lines in there so that they kind of wash out a bit. It's very important that it's dry before you start touching up background colors to your subject. I'm deliberately not touching anything near the beak because that's semi-dry right now and that's when you get the worst bleed. And because I'm just using those three colors together, I should not have a problem with things not matching up. That's the benefit of a, uh, a limited palette like this. Pretty much all the colors you can mix from it will, will look like them belong together and match up. It can be harder if you use a lot of different colors. Probably can't lift that bleed up, but I can mix it into the background here. So it's not so noticeable. Still not touching the beak. I'm trying to make the color around it so as pale as I can. I guess I could go to the top of the beak because I didn't touch that. I'm not touching anything else there. I'm not quite happy with this.
No, I could just trim it off once I'm done, but Let's see if I can scrub them a little bit so they not so visible. Well, some more gray areas in between too. I don't want the texture of the the background to be too noticeable because it's the goose we want to look at, not the background. Um, so we will make make his head the focal, and everything else is just kind of diffuse. I'm gonna take ever so little bit of that background color over into yet another well. I'm gonna make a faint wash. Really thin it down a lot. Make it nearly invisible like that. Test it there. You can barely see it and that's what's the purpose of it. And I'm gonna make a wash over his neck. And on the underside here of his head. I'm not going to do it on the beak because that's not necessary. That is already um, yellow, red. And this is to, to bring him together with the, the background because there's always some light from whatever you're standing on or, or your surroundings that ref reflects some colors back onto you. And uh, it doesn't have to be super visible, but if you just add just a little bit into the subject of your, your painting, it, it really brings it in with the background. It, it makes it match them up. I did the same thing when I did the pastel drawing of this vase. It's really difficult to see, but there's just a little bit of the brown up on the vase, and there's a little bit of the yellow in the highlights. And, and in here and on the shadow side I took the blue from the vase and put in the shadow there and I even took the brown from the table up on the background too so that way all of it ends up coming together and it's, it's still a blue vase on a brown table with a yellow background and it's the same thing I'm doing here I take that background color and I will reflect it in on on him my goose here. I think we can start working up underneath his beak here. It's okay that you can see a little bit of the, the texture of the background. It's just I don't want it to be super visible. That's still too wet to do anything with. And I also not make a uni color background because that's kind of boring with just a flat same color background everywhere. I'm leaving some light up here because that also brings kind of the eye up to his face. Don't want a halo around his his head, but uh, you want something light to to set off his head a little bit. There's a little bit of a bleed there. That I'm gonna see if I can pick up. Wrong brush stroke. Try with a dry brush. Brush. Mm, some toilet paper.
I'm gonna ditch the tape. the worst of it. Right until I turn it white can I see it from over here. It helped. Now I got the paper to peel a little bit. I'm not gonna touch that anymore. I'm just gonna soften these things a little bit, add a little more color on the rest. See if I can soften this up. Gotta add a little more grey to this one to make him fade out a little bit into the background over here where he's really dark. And this is another way of kind of dampening his outline so again you you want to watch it look at his head I'm gonna trim it here approximately I guess when I'm totally done and everything is nice and dry. I'm going to let it dry a little bit and I'm going to see if I can get that pilling to, to go away. And I'm going to take a break. So, I've dried it very thoroughly and I carefully tried to get those pill parts away from the paper here. I actually, I'm not sure if it's the surface of pills or if it's, if I left some toilet paper on there. I'm not going to paint any more there. I, I have a little bit here that I want to fix. So I want it, it's not fainting out the, the way I want it to. that add just a touch of paint up here because I didn't want that pale part underneath his chin and I will call this one done. A goose in spring in southern Jutland in April or March. I think it was even March. It's nearly a year ago. I hope he'll come back with his lovely lady there. He's more than welcome to come and eat more of our grass. The horses sure has more than enough to share. Now this is dry enough that I can add a little bit of grassy texture behind him. So, one more drying session with the vac with the vacuum cleaner. Gosh I'm thick. The hair dry and we'll cut him to size. So he is dry. I'm gonna move a few things out of my way. Because we now need room for a ruler. And I gotta 
fairly long one of the kind so it will easily knock stuff over. And I don't want any more paint because I just cleaned my work surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my... I might have to move my camera a bit. Because I'm going to see if I can find... I think I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to try to use that, this line to, to cut from. I'm going to secure the paper with tape. And that is easier to do when the paper does not buckle. Uh, what is it? This has been wet. So where is my tape roll? Now I of course moved everything away and I can't find it any longer. Toilet paper, pencil case. Oh well. I'm gonna take that clump off. So I am going to buy myself a short metal ruler. I have a big one. This is a 50 centimeter plastic ruler. I have one that is 60. That is like two feet long uh, metal ruler. And that's good for big size papers, but it's terrible for my desk here. A good sharp pointed hobby knife. Yeah, and I want a shorter metal ruler because plastic rulers are not really fit for this. Okay, I'm going to line up my ruler. I'm going to put the heel on my hand and a lot of weight on it because I don't want anything to shift. Put my knife well up against the rule and with a good deal of pressure and hopefully some precision. I hope that I pushed hard enough to get it in one piece. There. Let's see how much better that looks. Also fairly okay. Size. The cut is maybe not as straight as I like it, but it will do. And with a metal ruler, it had been even better because then I wouldn't have then I would have put, pushed harder up against the ruler. But the problem about plastic ruler is that you can cut into them if you're not careful. So I painted a grey goose on a yellowish, oops, yellowish grey background with three bright colors. Told you, you just need three good colors to paint. It take it does take a little bit of mixing adjustment. It, often it will, at least until you really get used to using the, the paint, it will take a little. Especially when you're mixing grays and browns, you you will have to take a little bit more of that and a little bit of the more of this until you get to the point where you want to be. And that's why I mix a wash because I want paint enough for uh, for that particular part of the subject. I can really recommend having uh, palettes with lots of little wells because then you can make a lot of washes. These ones doesn't cost a lot. These are little plastic palettes. And for washes, it, it doesn't matter if you have porcelain, glass or plastic because when you have this much water in the well it the color doesn't beat up it's more if you are making little little pools of paint to to go with that it is annoying to use plastic so this was i think it's long enough i gotta do one thing it is today 
15th of January 2019 IMPIXH Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe and come back for more content. Take care. Bye bye.